So what happened this weekend in New Year's Six Bowls, I think is kind of what was expected to happen. I don't think many people thought that Florida State had a great chance to beat Georgia. There was talk all week of if Florida State wins this game, they're going to go ahead and declare themselves national champions. And I think you kind of have to put that. I mean, you kind of put that cart before that horse. I, I don't know that many on Florida State's team thought that they were going to win. But despite getting just absolutely demolished at the hands of Georgia, and I, I'm not surprised that it happened. I'm surprised, I think, this, how, how easy it was for Georgia, how wide the margin of victory was for Georgia. I mean, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big butt kicking. No matter the situation, a 60-point win is a, is a big deal. But I don't think that proves the college football playoff committee correct in its decision to include Alabama, Texas, Washington, and Michigan as its final four instead of Florida State or even Georgia. I know that the a popular sentiment after the game was that Georgia deserved to be one of the four best teams in the country rather than Washington or rather than Texas. And I get that. But I think there's a reason Georgia wasn't in that final four. And was, that was because they had their chance to prove that they were one of the four best teams in the country, and they didn't do that. To win the national championship in 2023, you have to be one of the four best teams of Michigan, Washington, Texas, or Alabama. You had your opportunity to prove that you were better than Alabama. You did not do that. You had your shot. And I've, I've had this discussion on the podcast before. I'm like, hey, if you are in a top six matchup in the final weekend of the season, you have you are having your opportunity to prove that you are one of the four best teams in America and to cement your place as, hey, this is what we deserve. We deserve to be ranked as one of the four best teams. You didn't you didn't get that done. Alabama did in a spot where there's only so many spots slots to fill I don't have a ton of sympathy for Georgia I think they will go back and view the 2023 season as one that got away uh, opportunity to probably have won a third national championship but you didn't win the biggest game one of the I don't know three games that you were challenged all season you don't have anybody to blame but yourself on the flip side of that matchup Florida State did not prove the college football playoff committee correct in getting absolutely walloped by Georgia. That's not the same Florida State that played the previous 12 and 13 weeks. Not only are they without Jordan Travis, you are without 23 opt-outs for NFL draft, transfer portal, guys that just said, it is not worth it to me to play in a meaningless bowl game. And... That brings you to another topic and another discussion of whether bowl games are meaningless. If kids who are going to play in them decide they're meaningless, then they're meaningless. The only reason we've put importance on them is because there's been an agreed upon thought process of that they are important. But if everybody else comes to the realization that I don't put value on them, I don't put importance on them then they don't have value and importance. It's the same thing as NFTs. It's the same thing as paper money. It's the same thing as gold. It's the same thing as diamond jewelry. It, if a whole subset of the population in the coming year says, oh, who gives a shit about diamonds? Who cares about gold? Then those things don't have value anymore. NFTs were flash in the pan, right? That for a hot second, they had value. People valued them, therefore they were valuable. And then quickly, people did not value them. People valued bowl games for the last 100 years. And now if the kids who are going to participate in them don't value them, then they have no value. It's that simple. You can argue that this sport is, that bowl games are designed for fans, etc. At the end of the day, for the fans to get tremendous value out of them. The players have to get tremendous value out of them. The coaches have to get tremendous value out of them. The administrations, the universities have to get tremendous value out of them. They don't, or at least right now, there is a, a, a sizable chunk of players who say, one, it's not worth it to me. And two, it, it, 
And is this maybe a loser mentality? Yeah, but it's the reality of two. We're going to get our asses kicked. So I'm I'm not going. I don't want to be a part of it. Okay. What else are you going to do? The idea, and I I saw this, I I forget who had tweeted it out this past weekend that basically said like, hey, the bowl sponsors, the TV, uh, the, the media needs to get behind paying some of these dudes NIL money to get them on board with playing in the bowl games. If you have decided I'm not going to play because I don't want to damage my NFL future or my draft stock by picking up an injury in this game, is $10,000 from Duke's mayonnaise going to entice you to play in the game? No. So you're in, a, you're in a rock and a hard place. But if a bunch of guys at Florida State say, hey, I don't put value on playing in this game, then the game isn't valuable. It's that simple. But they didn't prove the college football playoff committee right by getting their tail swept. It's just a completely different team. When you have that many kids who aren't in the lineup playing. Now, I don't, I don't think that Florida State matches up all that well with Georgia to begin with. If they were completely healthy, if they were without only Jordan Travis, I don't know. Like, I, I don't think it's a 63 to three game. I, I, it's probably a 49 to 20 game. But is Georgia just significantly better than Florida State? I think so even if they had 22 of the 23 guys that they were without or whatever, if Keon Coleman plays in that game, do they score three points? Probably not. But I I don't know that it's enough to close a 60 point gap, but I don't think you can look back. It's just not a fair apples to apples comparison. And it doesn't vindicate the college football playoff committee. I have said, uh, I've said here in, in this space that I don't think Florida state was one of the four best teams. I don't know that Florida state was one of the six best teams without Jordan Travis with Jordan Travis. I think you can make that argument that they are one of the five best teams. And that's where they got ranked at the end of the day. But I don't think that they are this juggernaut that got completely screwed by the college football playoff committee. I just don't think that's reality. But I also don't think it's fair to then look back. It's almost looking at that final score completely with with like no context whatsoever and saying, oh, well, college football playoff committee got it right. You can't operate in this contextless world. Things matter. The fact that 23 guys weren't available for one team matters. You can argue that Georgia has been decimated by the portal. Yes, somewhat to their own doing their own missteps of stockpiling guys and going, Oh crap, we got to get some of these dudes out of here, but it wasn't to the level of Florida state. Now do I, I don't think all 23 dudes that sat out for Florida state are going to be, you know, NFL lifers or anything like that, but it does bring up a discussion about whether or not bowl games are meaningless. It's not a fun discussion, Because when you look at it logically, you separate the history and tradition. And I've said before that tradition is peer pressure from dead people. When you separate that stuff out and you look at it on the surface, how much value does playing in a bowl game that what is at stake for Florida State yesterday? Not a whole lot. What do they get if they win? Congratulations, you won the Orange Bowl. And I realize that in the 25 years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, 30 years ago, winning the Orange Bowl is a big deal because there wasn't one singular trophy that you could go grab, claim as yours, and be the definitive national champion. So there are a couple of games that have a little bit more cachet than others. But in the current system, the way that it's set up right now, What does winning the Orange Bowl get you? What does winning the Cotton Bowl get you? The Peach Bowl yesterday. If you are not in the college football playoff semifinals and then the national championship game, what does that that mean for you? It's the same thing as, like, schools can be excited that they made the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament because you're marching towards that national title game. But if you win the NIT, okay, great. Awesome. Not many people put a ton of value on that because what does it mean? You were the 69th best team in the country? Cool. In a four-team playoff, winning a New Year's Six Bowl makes you 
one of the fifth through eighth best teams in a, in America. I, I don't know that there are a, a ton of places that you can like kind of hang your hat on that, right? Like it's you ever go to like an NBA game or an NFL game and you or, or, or any pro sports game and you look at the banners and the rafters and it's like, like I'm an Indianapolis Colts fan and they have one that's like uh, 2012 AFC finalist. What? <laughs> like you're going to put a banner up for losing the AFC championship game? Why in the world would that be something that you're like, hell yeah. You won the Orange Bowl. Congratulations. It was one of those years where it wasn't one of the semifinals. 30 years ago, like, hey, we won the Orange Bowl. It's a big deal. It's not today. And to op- like, and there are so many people who haven't realized that the sport has shifted from where it was 30 years ago to where it is now. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything unless you're in the college football playoff. And I don't know how many times, how, how often you can go through that fact without just coming to that realization that like, hey, it doesn't mean anything anymore unless it is involved in de- deciding who is the champion. And that's okay. The idea that college football has completely ruined itself by a playoff is, I think, asinine because – in what other sport would you accept that like, hey, I'm just we're just going to say that whoever everybody thinks was the best was the best. You wouldn't allow that. It's why every other sport has a playoff tournament, et cetera, to decide who its champion is, because that's the best way to do it. Why d- deal with hypotheticals and like, oh, well, so and so wouldn't have stopped. Like, no, you put them on the field and you do it. Now, I realize that there is some. uh there's it's somewhat hypocritical to say that at the same time saying, you know, Florida state went 13 and 0 and won all of their games, but not every win is created equally. Not every loss is created equally. Not every conference championship, not every conference is created equal. And that's just part of the reality. So at some point until you get to the point where you are only like, and I, I hate the analogy of like, Oh, well, the Detroit lions, they lost to the Cowboys. Therefore they're not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> It's stupid. It's not an apples to apples thing. The SEC is not equal to the ACC. The ACC is not equal to the Big Ten. The Big Ten is not equal to the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is not equal to the Big 12. They are not created equally. And there's no real easy way to quantify that other than you look at some of these teams just look like they play football better than others. And that's all there is to it. But the fact that people are outraged that guys aren't playing in the Orange Bowl, and, and I, I don't, I think this is the last year you have to deal with it. I don't think that, I, I don't think that you'll have this issue going forward in the twelve team playoff because I don't think guys are going to opt out of a twelve team playoff. I don't think guys are going to hit the transfer portal as early in a twelve team playoff if their team is still in the hunt for winning a title. If you're still one of those twelve teams, I, I, I don't see how you leave. I got Malik Murphy left Texas. And I get that. Due to the timing, he had to leave. And I, I, we'll talk about the timing because I think there's this idea that college football has been ruined. I don't think it's been ruined. I think it's inconvenient. And we'll chat about that later this week. But I don't think you're going to see those opt-outs for the NFL draft in a 12-team playoff. I don't think you're going to see the volume of transfer portal entries that you'll see now. So I think we're on the verge of getting this all figured out, I think. But it's a work in progress, but nobody wants to deal with the the work in progress. Florida State was put in a bad situation. And Kirby Smart, after the game, was like, hey, they were put in a bad situation. We kicked their ass, and now I think we need to figure this out. We need to fix it because it wasn't fair. And, and I think he's right. I think it wasn't fair for Texas A&M to play with 55 scholarship guys. They have to figure it out. But the idea of like, this hurt me more than it hurt you. Like, okay, pump the brakes a second, all right? Like the idea that Kirby Smart was really affected because he had to kick the hell out of somebody to prove a point. I was like, okay, that's enough. But I think what happened this weekend is what we expected to happen. I think Florida State was expected to get trounced by Georgia. But that doesn't prove the college football playoff committee right. Just like Missouri beating Ohio State doesn't prove 
a whole lot. I, I don't know that Ole Miss beating Penn State proves a whole lot. If you have differing motivations and there are differing circumstances where Missouri didn't have opt-outs, Ohio State's best offensive football player maybe ever decided he didn't want to play in a game. Like, that happens. Missouri, or Ole Miss is going to bring in a – and I think we'll talk about this later in this week too – of teams that are – going to benefit greatly from a 12 team playoff. I think Ole Miss and Penn state are two of those teams that are on that list, but Ole Miss is going to be in the playoff next year. Almost guaranteed because they are making wholesale changes that you saw going into this weekend that like, Hey, they're, they're pretty darn good. I don't think it was expected that Penn state was going. I, I, I think Vegas, Penn State was a, a three-point favorite against Ole Miss, and I thought that was outside of Georgia, Florida State. The biggest lock of the bowl season was that Ole Miss was going to I, – I don't, I don't see a way that Penn State was going to score with Ole Miss, and they didn't. So I, I don't know that there were any super, um, super big upsets, anything that made you go like, oh, wow, can you believe that happened this weekend? I think Ohio State's complete lack of offensive production was uh, somewhat unexpected. But when you get down to the point of, okay, you're playing your third-string true freshman quarterback against a really good Missouri defense, they're good. And I know that there were Ohio State fans that, like, oh, the Missouri game, like, the, the bowl game was going to be an afterthought because originally it was, okay, we're going to play Louisville in the Orange Bowl, and then it was, okay, now we're playing Mizzou in the Cotton Bowl. Neither one of those really moves the needle for you. Just because you don't have a, a ton of info, experience, whatever, with the opponent doesn't mean that Missouri's not good. Missouri's going to finish as the sixth-ranked team in the country, and I don't know that they're, they're, they're undeserving of that. But I don't know that anything that happened this weekend was super unexpected. And I don't think it says a whole lot either way about whether the college football playoff committee got it right or wrong a few weeks ago. I just think once those decisions are made, they're made in a vacuum. And then outside of that, context matters. Circumstances matter. And for Florida State, the circumstances and the context weren't great. And that's okay. You live to find another day and you go on about your business, but you can't let that bowl game result linger. You can't carry that into the off season. And I, I said last week, whatever happens in your bowl games, whatever happens in your bowl game, you can't decide who's going to be good next year. What it, it, those games happen in a vacuum and you got to punch a hole in that vacuum and start again, fresh on January 1st. And that's all there is to it. That'll do it for today's episode of The Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. Back at it tomorrow. We're going to preview the college football playoff semifinals. Got some really good games, really interesting matchups, intriguing matchups, a couple of games that I think could go either way. And we'll talk about them and preview them tomorrow here on a New Year's Day edition of The Daily Huddle. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you are listening on the podcast, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. I'll see you tomorrow right here on The Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.